we'll be doing a neural networks uh, today just a simple example we had something running on the website it's not working anymore used to look like that a noisy sinusoid prediction whatever number of yep, uh, layers hidden layers and we will be rewriting this in python but if you want to chat about anything else do let me know so I popped in and uh, this uh, image of what the front panel looks like into gpt4 oops didn't intend to do that hopefully what is this yeah the scroll is barely visible uh, we have the text from the page and yes we want to do a flask application but mainly relying on javascript we're going to be using a tensorflow js It's just templates, are they? Anyway, the good thing about the yeah, people say it's the hallucinating and what's not, we will be able to see how well it's actually performing by the end of this. Yeah, when I have sliders, so I essentially want to be able to control stuff. What is more? All ah, right. Yes, yeah, so we have this sliders uh, on the HTML. Then we have uh, training prediction chart and then the uh, error chart as well it keeps uh, putting all this uh, placeholders in the code is it for github copilot to sort out or or what yeah currently we have this page it used to be lab view uh, to begin with we don't like it we want to keep the url under 26 uh, characters it's currently it's 42 Any suggestions to what this should be called? Would be nice to have a prediction in it. Yeah, that doesn't make sense, does it? It should be something like basic uh, neural net. It's 
a bit too long as well. Yeah, I'll just call it neural net. Okay, so we should have a template for a Flask application. What do we need to set it up manually? I'll start with the info a text file. The good thing about I can actually share a, this a GPT-4 thing, can I? Right, could not failed to copy link to clipboard, could not create link. I think it can create a link if it uh, has uh, images in it or something. And that's a bit unfortunate. Let's try it again. No, I can't. Yes, ChatGPT can make mistakes, but again, we will be able to tell how good is this code in a sec. Uh, we will use a GitHub Copilot as well. Uh, can you generate the template for a Flask application with all the necessary files and folders and also the terminal commands for creating all the files and folders? Let's see if it can do that okay yes yeah, standard the uh, on the flask application is called or you forgot what it's called CD. Oops. A neural net. Ah, it's generating the code as well. We'll be able to compare this code to what the GPT-4 is uh, making. Sometimes it's the same. Sometimes it's not. Uh, but yes, we need. Um, these two folders and uh, yeah we might want to open it in another window uh, this is mainly because so for example Um, if you uh, do explain on the terminal, not on the terminal. If you do, no, not VS Code. A uh, workspace. Um, I don't know. Find neural nets. It will fail, I think, because there's just too many files in the whole project. So we'll let it run. Yeah, it's now passing, doing something with the whole, uh, all the folders and everything. Um, Just open all the
try to have a index uh, HTML and stuff. So the app I we want to keep it as uh, clean as possible. Hey, because we don't actually uh, want to do much, uh, if possible. Uh, we don't want to use the backend. Because then I'm using electricity. Don't like it. Do we have this HTML. Yeah, obviously. It will need a lot of modification. Then we have a script JS. I've been talking too much already, so let's uh, the, let the robot read this. In this JavaScript snippet, the model is created, compiled, and trained within the client's browser. The MUI updates are managed as callbacks within the training loop. You can display the loss in real time, which would give the user feedback on how the training is progressing. Regarding the addition of an accumulative performance chart, it's a good idea as it helps in visualizing the performance of the model over time, especially for users to see how the model improves or fails with different settings. Remember to handle edge cases where the model might not converge or the training might result in unexpected values. Also, test the app thoroughly to ensure that it performs well even on devices with limited processing power, as not all users may have high performance machines. Well, yeah, that will always be a problem, but uh, yeah, we'll take care of it uh, later. Training set size and hidden layer configuration. Utilize sliders or input fields to let users configure the size of the training set and the number of neurons in each hidden layer. Live prediction chart. Use a JavaScript charting library like Chart.js to plot the real-time predictions versus the training data. Error trend chart. Similarly, plot the error trend as the training progresses. Yes, we have a... Um... Yeah, let's pop in the sliders into the HTML. Why is there a script section there? And this kind of helps because what we can do now let's go say JavaScript. Hey, we have snippets of the code that we want to integrate in the info text file. No, we don't want to automate that. No, we don't want to automate that. We want to integrate the code in uh, the text file into the project. Yes, this is where GitHub Copilot is going to 
can you regenerate the whole HTML script? Yeah, this is where GPT-4 on OpenAI website should be better. Yes, so we're using now both uh, TensorFlow.js and Chart.js. It added that. We also have our Script.js. It's fine. We have our controls. We'll see in a second what it looks like. Okay, this looks like a complete code to me. Hypothetical JavaScript. Clear. Can we regenerate the whole JavaScript code? Yep. Yep. Certainly. Below is a skeleton for the script. JS that handles the interaction with the HTML sliders, initializes the neural network, trains it with the provided data, and updates the charts in real time. This is an example, and you would need to flesh it out with your actual data processing and neural network configuration specifics. Remember that you'll need to supply the actual sinusoidal data for the get training data, function and configure the neural network's architecture as needed. The training set size and layer sizes are read from the slider inputs, so they're adjustable by the user. This JavaScript will need to be loaded at the end of your index HTML file to ensure that the document is fully parsed before the script runs. Make sure to include TensorFlow, JS and Chart, JS in your HTML as well, as the script relies on those libraries. Where is the sinusoid being generated?
the sinusoidal data isn't being generated in the provided snippet, it only sets up a placeholder. Here's how you can generate sinusoidal data with some noise, which is typically used for training and testing in neural network scenarios. We update the get training data function to generate noisy sinusoidal data based on the training set size. Let's call the get training data. Your data generation logic will go here, placeholder, blah, blah, blah. Why is GPT-4 messing up the names? Yes, just use basic math function to generate the random numbers. Uh, that's for the noise and the sinusoid. Uh, where's the frequency of it being set? In this generate sinusoidal data function, XS represents the input features which are the points on the x-axis, evenly spaced between 0 and 2 pi. ES represents the corresponding labels which are the sin, x, values with some added noise for variability. Noise is added to the sin, x, values by math. Random, asterisk 0 0.1 to 0 0.05 to simulate measurement or sampling noise. These are then converted into TF, Tensor 2D which TensorFlow, JS uses for training. This data can now be used to train the neural network. The SYN, X, function provides a continuous curve that the neural network can learn from. The added noise makes the problem more realistic and challenging, as the network must learn the underlying sinusoidal pattern despite the random variations in the data. Script JS not being found because it's in a static folder. Can you fix? Dead. Control I should be straightforward. Right. Can we see the charts? Okay. <laughs> Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. this style CSA. Yeah, we could use some styling. It's always one of those things that should, uh, that's always left uh, to the very end. Uh, shall we get the GitHub Copilot to do it? Do we need the workspace uh, operator?
generate script for style or styles style Yeah, I'll have to get rid of it eventually because we have um, actually styles uh, CSS code for the project itself. Why am I not seeing? And not found why HTML right because it's also in this the different folder, isn't it? Right. Yeah. This could be leaking a uh, memory this thing where it keeps uh, adding stuff to add to the same chart doesn't make any sense doesn't well first we don't see the training and prediction. Hey, we have no errors. Good, another good thing about the GPT-4 is that we can do this. Um, any issues with the front panel? Who generated the code for it? Was it GPT-4 or a copilot? Don't even remember. Must have some sort of uh, template. Is there a template in this code? Uh, not a template, a uh, placeholder. Is there a placeholder in this JavaScript code? We want to uh, not overload the uh, GPT-4 as well because we had we still have that uh, usage limits may apply. They actually changed that. <laughs> used to be I forgot like forty prompts per three hours or something. 
keep changing this this stuff I'm pretty sure there is a copout says no The front panel in the uploaded image is a graphical user interface for a neural network training application. It appears to consist of sliders for adjusting parameters and areas to display charts showing training results and error trends. From the provided code and the visual, it seems like the interface was designed to be functional and straightforward. The JavaScript code snippet appears to set up the neural network, generate the training data, and kick off the training process, with updates reflected in the chart, JS plots. The get training data function generates sinusoidal data points with added noise, which can be used to train the neural network. The noise ensures that the data isn't perfectly predictable, which is a common real-world scenario. Concerning your question about whether this was generated by GPT-4 or Copilot, this code looks like something that either could have produced, given an appropriate prompt. Both GPT-4 and GitHub Copilot can generate code samples, including HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, based on user instructions. The code could also have been based on a common template for machine learning in JavaScript, especially with TensorFlow, JS. Regarding placeholders, the function get training data is complete and doesn't have a placeholder. It generates noisy sinusoidal data ready for use. The train model function is ready to train the neural network but assumes that you have already set up the chart, JS instances, prediction chart and error trend chart. There are no explicit, template, placeholders in this code. It's functional as is, but you would need to make sure the HTML and CSS are set up correctly to match the JavaScript functionality, especially for displaying the values from the sliders and for the canvas elements where the charts are rendered. Adjusting the neural network architecture, more layers, different types of layers, etc. Setting specific training options, batch size, different optimizers, learning rate, etc. Enhancing the chart options for better visualization, setting axis labels, title, legend details, etc. Handling predictions after training, which isn't covered in this snippet. You'll want to use model, predict, and display the results on the prediction chart. Ensure that the front-end interface reflects the functionality that the code provides, and test the application thoroughly to work out any bugs or UX issues. Okay, the main issue at the moment is that, that the first chart is not displaying any data. Yep. If the first chart isn't displaying any data, there are a few things we need to check. Chart initialization. Verify that the prediction chart is being initialized properly. It should be tied to less than canvas greater than element in your HTML. Ensure the get context, 2D, is being called on the correct element. Data binding, the chart's dataset should be populated with data. In the provided code, there's a placeholder for the training and prediction data arrays. These should be filled with the actual data you want to plot. Chart updates, after the data is prepared, you need to make sure the chart is updated. This typically involves pushing data into the chart's dataset and then calling chart, update. Here's a more concrete check for each step. Step 1. Ensure the less than canvas greater than element with id equals prediction chart exists in your HTML. Step 2. Populate the dataset with actual data before calling chart update. For debugging purposes, you can manually insert some data to see if the chart renders. Step 3. Make sure to call update on the chart after the data is set. The code provided does not contain the logic for updating the training and prediction datasets after model training. You need to write that part of the logic and call update on the chart afterwards. For instance, console logs, insert console.log, statements to check if the data arrays are being populated as expected. Inspect element, use the browser's developer tools to inspect the less than canvas greater than element and check for any console errors that may indicate problems. Version check, ensure that the version of chart, JS you're using is compatible with the code you've written. Version differences can sometimes cause unexpected behavior. Try these steps, and if the issue persists, you may need to share more specific parts of your code or error messages that you're seeing in the browser's console for a more precise diagnosis.
Okay, so we do have the prediction chart. JavaScript. Okay, where does this go? Is this going to... Yes, it's just some mock uh, mock stuff that doesn't do anything. Then we have this sinusoid. Did we forget to actually implement that, didn't we? to have it in here I'm pretty sure we did include that um, yeah the function is called something else that's not cool The function is called something else. The LinkedIn app is really bad. Why is it so bad? I suspect we're not calling this function correctly. Yeah, if someone thinks he can just uh, um, generate um, your whole code with GPT-4, well, yeah, this is where you start uh, getting into hitting walls. This is where you start hitting walls. Uh, what does help though? Well, obviously, I need to comment all this out. So, what is it still training if there's no data? It's a bit odd.
the error trend is there, but the data is not being properly displayed on the first chart. The chart is working uh, okay in general, but not uh, displaying the training and prediction data. This will be a replacement for this older tool that we had in uh, the output is a prediction. If the error trend the chart is displaying lab. data, but the first chart is not, it's possible that the issue lies with the way the training and prediction data are being handled or updated in the chart. Let's focus on debugging the training and prediction chart. Verify chart data. Make sure the data for the training and predictions is being generated and formatted correctly before attempting to display it on the chart. Chart data update. Ensure that the training and prediction data are being updated on the chart object and that chart update is called afterwards. Async. Await. Since train model is an async function, confirm that any code dependent on the results of training is inside or properly awaits the training process. Given that you have a train model function already set up to train the network, you need to insert the logic to populate the prediction chart with actual training and prediction data after the training is completed. Here's how you can modify your train model function to update the chart after training. In the modified function above, after the model is trained with model.fit, it's then used to predict values based on the input data access. These predictions are then formatted into an array suitable for chart. JS using array, then, since, predict, returns a tensor. The predictions and actual values from the training data are set on the respective datasets of the prediction chart. The chart is updated inside the then to ensure the asynchronous operation has completed and the data is ready. After adding this logic, when you call train model, the prediction chart should be updated with the training and predicted values. Lastly, it's crucial to ensure that the scales for the chart are set appropriately. If your prediction values are very small or very large, the chart may not display them correctly. You can configure the scales in the options property of the chart configuration. If you are still experiencing issues after these checks, please look for errors in the browser's developer console, as Thanks they can give clues about what might be going wrong. Joining in. You have any specific questions? comments especially if you check the body chaos website already i'll be more than glad to hear your constructive feedback currently we're trying to fix uh, this neural net uh, wave prediction which we had working in the past but only videos of it uh, left used to be I don't know what the quality defaulting to no it's meant to be 1080p yeah that's, that's what it used to look like could set your training size uh, number of hidden layers and it will do the noisy sinusoid and then the prediction of it and we'll show you the error trend so currently we have the template for it and everything. Try to get GPT-4 clear. Clear. To fix it for us. GPT, uh, yeah, OpenAI actually released this really nice um, text-to-speech. I'm just having trouble with it because it's reading everything ex instead of uh, just the bits that I wanted to read. Clear. Yeah, that's what it sounds if like. If the error trend chart is displaying data, but the first chart is not, it's possible that the issue lies with the way the training and prediction data are being handled or updated in the chart. Let's focus on debugging the training and prediction chart. 
One, verify chart data. Make sure the data for the training and predictions is being generated and formatted correctly before attempting to display it on the chart. Two, chart data update. Ensure that the training and prediction data are being updated on the chart object and that chart.update is called afterwards. Three, async await. Since train model is an async function, confirm that any code dependent on the results of training is inside or properly awaits the training process. Given that you have a train model function already set up to train the network, you need to insert the logic to populate the prediction chart with actual training and prediction data after the training is completed. Here's how you can modify your train model function to update the chart after training. JavaScript function to train the model and update the charts. Async function train model. Existing setup code slash train the model await model access ys epochs 50 callbacks on epoch end async epoch logs org slash existing error trend chart update logic. Use the model to do predictions on the training data. Const predictions equals model dot predict xs. Convert tensorflow.js tensors to regular arrays for chart.js predictions dot array. Then pred array equals Update the prediction dataset, index 1, with predicted values, prediction chart.data.datasets1, data equals predarray.flat. For the training dataset, index 0, we, never, we convert ys tensor to array as array. Then train array equals a prediction chart.data.datasets0, data equals train array.flat. Since we're updating the chart asynchronously, make sure to call update inside then prediction chart.update. In the modified function above, after the model is trained with model.fit, it's then used to predict values based on the input data excess. These predictions are then formatted into an array suitable for chart.js using dot array. Then, since dot predict returns a tensor, the predictions and actual values from the training data are set on the respective datasets of the prediction chart. The chart is updated inside the then to ensure the asynchronous operation has completed and the data is ready. After adding this logic, when you call train model, the prediction chart should be updated with the training and predicted values. Lastly, it's crucial to ensure that the scales for the chart are set appropriately. If your prediction values are very small or very large, the chart may not display them correctly. You can configure the scales in the options property of the chart configuration. If you are still experiencing issues after these checks, please look for errors in the browser's developer console, as they can give clues about what might be going wrong. Yeah, the problem with two robots is that they compete with one another. And it's not great. To remember, I have to select the whole code with Copilot. Trying to ensure that the training prediction data is being updated. I think it is. Ah, no, so it is there. Um, but it's not being updated. Updated. Don't need deadline in the train model. We wait for model feed. Epox callbacks. Yeah, we need to update the prediction chart. We need to do it before the error chart. 
How about the chest? It do these for a sec. Okay, we need to restructure this code. <laughs> Just pop the code and see what it says. If it can find any mistakes, there's like the order of things is not quite right. I think. The training and prediction update logic in the Onepoch N callback is incomplete. Currently, it's set up to push values to a prediction chart, but it's not specified what data should be used. You need to replace the placeholders, asterisk your training data here asterisk, and asterisk your prediction data here asterisk, with the actual training and prediction values. Here's how you should update the Onepoch N callback. The modifications above involve using the model, predict, function to generate predictions at the end of each epoch and then plotting these predictions in the chart. The training data, ease, is also being used to update the training data series in the prediction chart. Please note, the above code may result in a dense chart if you have many epochs since you're pushing new labels and data points after each epoch. Yeah, we don't This might not be the intended behavior, as typically you'd want to plot epoch versus loss in the error trend chart and the actual versus predicted values in the prediction chart, which doesn't necessarily need to happen each epoch, but rather after all training is done or at specified intervals. Also, there's a mix of synchronous and asynchronous code that you need to be careful with, especially regarding the async, await patterns and promises. Ensure the data is not being used before it is available. The array, then, is used to convert the TensorFlow, JS tensors into a regular array suitable for chart, JS. This operation is asynchronous and should be handled properly to ensure the data is available when updating the chart. Okay. We have the sign, so I, we have the prediction. Prediction is totally wrong. And this should add more data points. Prediction is still wrong. Yeah, we don't want it to. Uh, what is it like re when it's retraining? Uh, we. What did it say just now? That was an important bit. I wish this. Um, Voice, the open AI voice. Was... The training and prediction update logic in the Anipok end callback is incomplete. Currently, it's set up to push values to the prediction chart, but it's not specified what data should be used. You need to replace the placeholders, slash your training data here, and your prediction data here, with the actual training and prediction values. Here's how you should update the Anipok end callback. JavaScript function to train the model async function train model plus previous setup code start training the model await model fit xs ys pox 50 callbacks on epoch and async epoch logs use the model to do predictions on the training data const preds equals model dot predict xs convert predictions to array for plotting preds dot array then pred array equal update prediction chart data prediction chart dot data dot labels push epoch Prediction chart dot data dot data sets one data equals pred array dot flat. Update training chart data ys dot array. Then train array equals prediction chart dot data dot data sets so data equals train array dot flat. Update prediction chart prediction chart dot update. Update the error trend chart after each epoch. Error trend chart dot data dot labels push epoch. Error trend chart dot data data sets data dot push logs dot loss. Error trend chart dot update. Rest of the train model function. 
The modifications above involve using the model.predict function to generate predictions at the end of each epoch and then plotting these predictions in the chart. The training data, WISE, is also being used to update the training data series in the prediction chart. Please note, the above code may result in a dense chart if you have many epochs since you're pushing new labels and data points after each epoch. This might not be the intended behavior, as typically you'd want to plot epoch versus loss in the error trend chart and the actual versus predicted values in the prediction chart which doesn't necessarily need to happen each epoch, but rather after all training is done or at specified intervals. Also, there's a mix of synchronous and asynchronous code that you need to be careful with, especially regarding the async await patterns and promises. Ensure that data is not being used before it is available. The dot array, then, is used to convert the TensorFlow.js tensors into a regular array suitable for chart.js. This operation is asynchronous and should be handled properly to ensure the data is available when updating the chart. Well, seems like keep hitting that train button doesn't improve anything. The prediction is wrong. Is it because our model is wrong? Model must be wrong. So we don't have anything currently in the back end, it's just uh, front end uh, JavaScript processing. And we are using TensorFlow.js and plotting with charges. Check if that actually works. The Apache license open source with charges as well. MIT license should be fine to use. Question is why is this prediction so bad? Wait, this one. Yeah, the previous thing we had the prediction happening after the noisy science so it's like the future future prediction obviously this will make you super rich because you will be able to predict the stock prices and the like I'm just joking of course let's pop this into gpt Uh, can you explain the chart mainly what is happening with the prediction? Yep. So obviously it can do everything for you. Clear. By the way, this session is meant to be interactive. So please comment. Is it? On the feeding. Let's read that. In the screenshot you've provided, there are two charts displayed. One, training and prediction chart. The blue line likely represents the actual training data from the noisy sinusoidal function you've been working with. This is the target the neural network is trying to learn. The red dots represent the neural network's predictions. It seems that the predictions are not aligning well with the actual training data. This discrepancy could be due to several reasons, such as insufficient training, not enough epochs, a model that is not complex enough to capture the underlying pattern of the data, or it could also be an issue with how the data is being fed into the model for predictions.
Two, error trend chart. The green line shows how the error changes over each epoch during the training of the neural network. The error is measured by the loss function used during training, which in this case is mean squared error. The downward trend indicates that the model is learning and improving its predictions over time as the error decreases. However, the error seems to plateau, suggesting that the model may have reached its capacity for learning from this dataset with the given architecture, or it might require more epochs to continue decreasing the loss. For the predictions not matching the training data closely, consider the following points for troubleshooting. Underfitting. The model may not have enough layers or neurons to capture the complexity of the sinusoidal pattern, especially if noise is present. Epochs. Training for more epochs may help if the error is still decreasing and hasn't plateaued. Learning rate. If the learning rate is too high, the model may be overshooting the optimal weights. If it's too low, it may not be converging fast enough. Data pre-processing. Ensure the data is correctly normalized or pre-processed as required by the model. Check predictions. Debug the prediction step to make sure the inputs to the model during prediction match the format of the training data. Based on the screenshot, it's clear that the model is attempting to learn the sinusoidal pattern but hasn't perfectly fit the data yet. The error trend is useful for diagnosing training performance, and it looks like the model could benefit from further tuning and training. In your latest screenshot, the first chart, which seems to be plotting the neural network's training and prediction results, has some noticeable characteristics. One, training data, displayed in blue. This is the actual output from your noisy sinusoidal function. It follows the typical sinusoidal wave pattern with some added noise. Two, prediction data, shown in red. This represents the neural network's predictions. There are a few key points to note about the predictions in the chart. The predictions seem to closely follow the actual training data at the start and end of the data range. There is a significant deviation in the middle where the predictions do not match the training data well. The shape of the prediction seems to somewhat resemble the shape of the training data, but is offset and not aligned. Three, potential causes for misalignment. Insufficient training data. With only 18 data points, the model may not have enough information to learn the underlying pattern of a noisy sinusoidal wave. Model capacity. The model might not be complex enough to capture the sinusoidal pattern accurately, especially given that the data includes noise. You might need more neurons or layers. Overfitting. If the predictions match the training data too closely at certain points, it might be an indication that the model is overfitting. This can be assessed with a validation set, which is not visible here. Noise. The noise in the data can make it harder for the model to learn the underlying sinusoidal pattern. Learning rate. 
an inappropriate learning rate could cause the model to not converge properly. Epoch count. If the error trend chart is showing a plateau before the last epoch, the model may not benefit from additional epochs. However, if it's still decreasing, more epochs might be necessary. The error trend chart below shows a sharp spike towards the end, indicating an issue during training at that particular epoch. This could be a result of an anomaly in the data or learning rate that caused the loss to increase suddenly. The rest of the trend suggests the model was learning and the loss was decreasing over time until that point. Regarding whether the first chart is updating correctly, it's hard to definitively say without more context on the actual and expected output of the model. However, the misalignment between the training and prediction data suggests there might be issues with the model training process or the way predictions are generated and plotted. It's essential to confirm that the model predictions are being processed and fed into the chart correctly. Debugging tips. Inspect the data. Log the training and prediction data to the console to make sure they are as expected. Check data feeding. Make sure the data used for predictions is the same as the data used for training in terms of pre-processing and normalization. Monitor overfitting. Implement a validation set to monitor for overfitting. Adjust model parameters. Experiment with the number of neurons, layers, and epochs based on the performance of the model. Evaluate learning rate. Adjust the learning rate and see if the training improves. Investigate error spike. Look into what caused the spike in error in the last epochs and address it. This might be due to the learning rate being too high, or it could be a data-specific issue. Training curve in my head is super sharp at the moment. No idea what's going on. How do we improve on it? Yeah, don't like this existing code and stuff. I just like it to regenerate the JavaScript. Could you regenerate the JavaScript code? make sure it can be executed without errors make sure there are no placeholders yep it's an example of a neural network building a neural network Yeah, when it starts thinking for a long time like that, it's not a good sign. It probably means we need to start a fresh uh, chat. By the way, if you want to check out the eye tracker that I'm using, it's available on the website over here on the landing page. So you can uh, try it yourself. It doesn't work well on uh, some uh, smaller screens like mobile phone screen. And while you add it to have a look at all the other tools and blogs on the site. You will be supporting the project that way. My RPM is currently very high, so you'll be really supporting the project. Just remember to turn your 
uh, add blocker off while you do it. Generated quite a bit of code. Wasn't even able to do it in one go. Clear. How do I get access to this um, text to speech as a standalone, like a browser add on or something? Labels will be dynamic based on Epoch's data sets. Label, error trend, border color, green, fill, false. Options. In this code, the update slider value function updates the slider value display when the slider is moved. The create model function initializes a sequential model with specified layers based on slider values. The get training data function generates a noisy sinusoidal data set. The train model function handles training the neural network model, updating the error trend chart after each epoch, and updates the training and prediction data in the charts. The initialization of the chart.js charts has been adjusted to define data sets without initial data. Before running this code, make sure you have linked tensorflow.js and chart.js correctly in your HTML. You'll also need to add a button or some trigger to call the train model function when you want to start training. The model predictions are only plotted at the end of training to avoid cluttering the chart with intermediate predictions. The training <laughs> just get any better or worse. And now the error trend is not showing anything. What did you do again? Certainly. Here's a revised version of the JavaScript code intended to be used with TensorFlow JS for training a neural network on a noisy sinusoidal dataset. This code should be ready to execute without placeholders, but keep in mind that the behavior and performance will depend on your specific data and neural network architecture. Okay, okay. What changes? The update make? slider value function updates the slider value display when the slider is moved. The create model function initializes a sequential model with specified layers based on slider values. The get training data function generates a noisy sinusoidal dataset. The train model function handles training the neural network model updating the error trend chart after each epoch, and updates the training and prediction data in the charts. The initialization of the chart, JS charts has been adjusted to define datasets without initial data. Before running this code, make sure you have linked TensorFlow, JS and chart, JS correctly in your HTML. You'll also need to add a button or some trigger to call the train model function when you want to start training. The model predictions are only plotted at the end of training to avoid cluttering the chart with intermediate predictions. It, there's no improvement. Well, nothing major. Can we make sure this thing actually gets updated? Okay, we went back to the previous code as your recent changes didn't fix anything, didn't make anything better. Now, can we start simple? On the first chart, can we make sure it is being updated? after pressing the train neural network button 
uh, currently that not seem to be working as expected yep To ensure that the first child updates correctly after pressing the train and N button, you need to set up your training function to update the child data once the training is complete. You should also make sure that the button triggers the training process when clicked. Here's an updated version of the JavaScript code with comments on the changes. key changes and points to note. Before starting the training, the child's data is cleared. This makes sure you're starting fresh when you hit the train and N button. After the training process, model.fit completes, predictions are made using the same input data XS. The predictions and the training data are converted to regular arrays and then assigned to the datasets of the prediction chart. The add event listener is used to bind the train model function to the button click event. Note that the array sync method is used to get the labels from the XS tensor. If XS is large, consider using an asynchronous approach with array instead. This code assumes that you have a button with the id train btn in your HTML. Make sure you also have TensorFlow, JS and chart, JS properly included in your HTML for this code to work. Lastly, always check the browser's console for any errors, as they can give you specific information about what might be going wrong. If you encounter errors or if the behavior is still not as expected, you may need to debug step by step starting from verifying the data all the way to the actual chart update calls. You want to clear or add to it? in the first chart do we want the, the predictions to continue a uh, displaying so the new prediction added to the chart similar to the error trend could you regenerate the whole train model function yep so I don't know if I understand correctly yeah one the so if the goal is to continually update the prediction chart with new predictions after each training epoch similar to how the error trend chart is updated you need to modify the train model function accordingly below is the revised train model function that appends new predictions to the chart after each epoch Yeah, I wanted to continue to add the uh, more predictions to to the chat. Then we need to figure out what happened there. Clear. in this updated function. The training data set, blue line, is plotted once at the beginning of training. If the training data doesn't change, there's no need to replot it after each epoch. 
After each epoch, the predictions are added to the existing prediction data set, red line, in the prediction chart. The operator is used to flatten and spread the new predictions at the end of the existing array of prediction data. If you want to maintain a history of predictions from each epoch, the code above will work. However, if you only want to display the latest predictions after each epoch, you would override the prediction data each time instead of appending it. Now, every epoch will result in the chart being updated with new predictions, giving you a dynamic visualization of how the model's predictions evolve over time. The error trend chart will continue to be updated in the same way as before, showing the loss at each epoch. Now, every epoch will result in the chart being updated with new predictions, giving you a dynamic visualization of how the model's predictions evolve over time. The error trend chart will continue to be updated in the same way as before, showing the loss at each epoch. Okay, I thought we said we want the first chart to behave in the same way as the second one. So as we keep uh, training, there will be more prediction data points added to the first chart. Yep. To append new prediction data points to the first chart after each training epoch, you need to adjust the train model function. Here's the updated train model function. Yeah, the error Just changes and notes. Keep producing. The training loop is now handled manually with A for loop to enable updating the prediction chart after each epoch. The error trend chart is updated as before, with the loss at each epoch. For the prediction chart, after each epoch, the predictions are added to the existing data. This assumes you want to keep expanding the x-axis with more data points as training progresses. If your intent is to replace the prediction data points at each epoch, you would assign the new prediction array directly instead of using the push method. The label array is expanded to accommodate the increasing number of prediction points. With this setup, each epoch's predictions are added to the chart, providing a growing visualization of how the model's performance evolves over time. Ensure your chart configuration can handle the expanding dataset, as this may require adjusting axis scales and other settings. Um, okay, I think I understand what is it doing. Let's give it a larger training set. So it is doing the prediction. Yeah, I want to like down sample it. Yeah, this will become unusable after a few iterations. Okay, that's the prediction.
Okay, so I understand now what it was doing before. Let's go back to it quickly. I need to check uh, how many data points there are. So that red. suspect now it's not plotting all the predicted values uh, let's try um can we log how many predicted values are there after yep After this line, we have a yeah, we're pushing it. Keeping the previous prediction that doesn't sound right. I did 50 epochs. Can we try? There are 100 epochs. Still going down, kind of. Yeah, that red chart is not displaying correctly. It seems that the red prediction values in the first chart are not displayed correctly are not displayed correctly Can we check, test that? Yep.
In the provided code and based on the screenshot, if the prediction values on the first chart are indeed displayed correctly, they should visually track the training data but with some deviation due to the noise and the fact that the model may not perfectly fit the data. However, the code seems to push the entire prediction array to the chart after each epoch. This will not work as intended because it repeats the entire prediction sequence on the chart, resulting in only the last epoch's predictions being properly aligned with the x-axis labels. For the first chart, we typically want to update the prediction points so that they replace the previous predictions, not append to them. Here's how you can modify the train model function to update the prediction points correctly after each epoch. In this modified train model function, before starting the training, the data for both charts is reset, which is standard when starting a new training session. We now train the model one epoch at a time within a loop. After each epoch, we update the error trend chart with a new loss value. We then predict with the model and update the prediction data on the prediction chart by replacing the previous data with the new predictions. The labels for the prediction chart are reset to match the x values of the training data for proper alignment. The updated function above will maintain the latest model predictions on the chart, aligning them with the training data after each epoch. The predictions will override the previous epoch's predictions, providing a clear visual of the model's current state. Please ensure you test the updated code to confirm that it works as expected and review the browser's console for any potential errors during execution. Certainly. Here's the updated train model function that correctly updates the prediction values in the chart after each training epoch. In this updated train model function, we initialize the labels for the prediction chart to match the training data size. We set the training data on the chart once before starting the training loop, as it doesn't change during training. We clear out the prediction data from the chart before starting training to ensure we're starting with a clean slate. Inside the loop, we train one epoch at a time using model.fit. After each epoch, we make predictions with the trained model and update the prediction chart immediately with these new values. We calculate a simple loss value for the error trend chart by measuring the mean squared error of the predictions against the true values. This is a simplistic approach and assumes the model.fit doesn't already provide a loss value you can use. We update both charts after each epoch. The prediction chart gets the latest predictions, and the error trend chart gets the latest calculated loss. Before running this script, make sure that TensorFlow JS is properly loaded and available as TF. The HTML elements with the IDs used in the script training set size, hidden layer 1 size, hidden layer minus 2 size, train BTN, prediction chart, and error trend chart, exist in your markup. The chart, JS library is also properly loaded and available to create the charts. Lastly, after making these changes, test the entire process to ensure that the behavior matches your expectations and there are no console errors. My apologies for the oversight. It seems I mentioned updating the error trend chart with a simplistic manual loss calculation, which isn't necessary since the model.fit function provides the loss value directly. Also, the updated train model function should not have any dependencies on synchronous operations like array sync within the training loop, which could cause performance issues. Here's the corrected complete train model function.
This function includes the entire training process, updating the prediction chart with the model's predictions after each epoch, and the error trend chart with the loss from each epoch. It now uses the asynchronous array method to convert the TensorFlow JS tensors to flat arrays suitable for chart JS and updates the charts inside the loop after awaiting the model's predictions. The error trend chart's data is sourced directly from the history object returned by model.fit. This should represent the complete function without any placeholders or synchronous operations that could block the UI during training. Please make sure you have the corresponding HTML elements and TensorFlow JS correctly set up to use this function. Yeah, we wanna uh, potentially add the red choice next time we continue this we'll add a choice to actually specify how much noise there is in the training sinusoid data set uh, we will add an option to choose how many epochs we train for and mainly i think there's a problem with uh, that predicted waveform being displayed so i'll have to fix that you haven't checked bionicchaos.com this is a good really good time to do so because uh, You'll be spoiling the project. And that will be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to turn your ad blocker off when you do so. Think is not displayed correctly. Just pop the whole code in. Yeah, we don't have much happening in the back end so there's not much happening at the back end do not worry about it now with the JavaScript eh, that might need some fixing the main concern is that the prediction red chart red plot in the first chart is not displaying correctly how many data points does it have is the prediction should be longer than the training set it's 
see image attached. Yep. Based on your description and the provided code, the prediction line, red, on the first chart should have the same number of data points as the training data, blue, for each epoch of training, since the model is using the same XS input tensor to generate predictions. If the red prediction line is not displaying correctly or is shorter than expected, there might be a few things to check. Ensure the predictions are being generated for the entire range of XS data. Make sure that the prediction array, pred array, is being completely flattened and assigned to the prediction dataset. Here's the part of the code responsible for updating the prediction line on the chart. If the prediction line is shorter than the training data, there could be a mismatch in how many data points are being passed to the pred array, flat, versus the ease, array, then, data equals greater than data, flat, for the training data. To diagnose this issue, we need to look at the actual lengths of these arrays. You can add console.log statements right after the arrays are created to check their lengths. When the prediction line is not displaying as expected, verify the following. The training data array and the prediction data array lengths should match and correspond to the number of excess data points. The labels for the chart should match these lengths. If you're pushing new labels with each epoch, it might cause misalignment. The chart configuration should not impose any constraints that might cut off data points. The length of the prediction array should match the length of the excess input tensor. If the model is making a prediction for each input, then the prediction should not be longer than the training set. It should be exactly the same length for a one-to-one -one mapping on the chart. Reviewing the console logs after adding the diagnostic console.log statements should provide you with the information to resolve the charting issue. If the prediction line length matches the training data length and the labels are correct, but it's still not displaying correctly, then it could be an issue with how chart, JS is configured or used. All train array, is it?
that how much longer it should be. Sorry, someone's probably screaming at me. Um, Okay, silly question. Why doesn't the prediction looks anything, nothing, anything? Doesn't look anything like the training data. Error doesn't go down. The prediction not resembling the training data could be due to several reasons. Let's explore some potential causes and diagnostic steps. Model capacity. If the model doesn't have enough capacity, not enough neurons or layers, it won't be able to learn the complex patterns from the data. Increasing the capacity might help, although I see you've already set the hidden layers sizes to 6, which should be ample for a simple sinusoidal pattern. Yeah. <laughs> Activation function. The choice of the activation function could affect the model's ability to learn. Sigmoid functions have a tendency to saturate and kill gradients, which could hamper learning. For sinusoidal data, THAN might be a better choice as it outputs values in a range that's more similar to a sinusoidal wave. Learning rate and optimizer. An inappropriate learning rate can cause the model to not learn effectively or to overshoot the minimum of the loss function. You might want to experiment with different learning rates or optimizers, like SGD with momentum, ADAM, etc. Data normalization. The input data should be normalized so that the features have a similar scale. This helps with the training of neural networks. Ensure your data is properly scaled. Loss function. Mean squared error should be appropriate for regression tasks like this, but ensure that it's being computed correctly. TensorFlow. JS handles this for you in the model. Compile method, but it's worth double checking. Epochs and convergence. Maybe the model has not trained for enough epochs to converge to a good solution. You might need to increase the number of epochs. Overfitting or underfitting. Overfitting would result in a prediction line that fits the training data too closely, including noise. Underfitting, which seems to be the case here, will result in a prediction line that doesn't capture the pattern of the data well. Adding more data or changing the model structure could help. Input data representation. Ensure that the input XS represents the features correctly and that the predictions are being made on the same feature scale. Chart update logic. Ensure the logic that updates the chart is working as intended. For each epoch, the prediction should be updated once, not appended multiple times. Here is an example of how you could adjust your existing create model function to use than instead of sigmoid. If these adjustments don't help, you may want to plot intermediate values during training to understand what the model is learning and how it updates its predictions. If you continue to have issues, consider a step-by-step -step approach to verify each part of the training process and the data flow. Okay, can we focus on the way the first chart is being rendered? I suspect there is something wrong with the prediction values being displayed on the chart. Can we focus on that? Troubleshoot and fix the code. Yep.
To troubleshoot the first chart rendering issue, let's focus on the code that handles the prediction data and how it's being plotted on the chart. Since the length of the prediction array is consistently equal to the training set size, as per your console log, but the predictions don't seem to fit the training data well, it's likely an issue with either the model's ability to predict correctly or how we're presenting the data in the chart. Given that the red prediction line doesn't seem to fit the blue training data well, here's what we should check and try. Data normalization. Ensure the input data XS and the output data ES are within a range that the activation function can handle well, especially since you're using THAN, which outputs between minus 1 and 1. If your data isn't normalized, consider applying min-max normalization or standardization. Learning dynamics. The network might not have learned the pattern within the training epochs provided. Inspect the loss values to see if they've plateaued, indicating that the training has converged, or if they're still high, suggesting the need for further training or hyperparameter adjustments. Chart data assignment. Confirm that the data is being assigned correctly to the chart datasets. The code currently updates the prediction dataset after each epoch, overwriting the previous data. Model predictions. After training, it can be helpful to separately evaluate the model's predictions to see if they follow the sinusoidal pattern before plotting them on the chart. This could be a separate test from the training loop to isolate the issue. Plotting logic. The plotting logic is currently designed to override the prediction line on each epoch. This is correct if we want to show the most recent model's predictions. However, if there are any issues with the way chart JS is set up or updated, it might not reflect the changes properly. To address these potential issues, here's what you can do. Test normalization. If you haven't already, implement and apply a normalization step to your get training data function. Evaluate predictions. After training, manually check the model's predictions against the expected sinusoidal pattern. Review plotting logic. Double check the chart. JS is configured to handle the dynamic update of the data arrays. Now, let's make sure the chart plotting logic is correct in the train model function. In this snippet, I've added a console.log, array statement to inspect the actual prediction values. This can help you verify that the predictions make sense. If they look correct in the log, but not on the chart, the issue is likely with how chart, JS is being updated or configured. Run this updated code and check the console logs. If the prediction values seem to fit the expected pattern in the console, but not on the chart, we need to look into the chart, JS configuration. If they don't fit the expected pattern in the console, the issue lies with the model's learning and predictions, not the chart. I guess it seems like I was wrong. Chat is uh, displaying correctly. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, let's give it a bigger uh, a training set size. And we now doing 500 epochs. Yeah, it is saturating at about point uh, one or so. Let's try increasing the number of hidden layers to five. It's gonna go below point one. Just to the max number. It's going lower now. Okay, it's pretty low. So do we need the larger a larger training set? Maybe. Maybe not. And this is all happening in JavaScript. So when you use it, you're not using my electricity. You'll be using your electricity. So that's promising.
Anyway, we'll continue improving that uh, next time. Do make sure you go check out bionicchaos.com. All the tools I make eventually appear there. And it is, the website is monetized, so it's running ads. So yes, you can use your ad blocker. That's what I'm doing at the moment, and it's actually blocking two ads from displaying on this page. Um, two ads there. So yeah, if you go check it out, don't forget to turn your ad blocker off. So you'll be helping the project. And I'll see you next time. Bye.